So far we've calculated volumes of, a, of solids of revolution by examining these cross-sectional disks, aka the disk method. Uh, it often happens that our disks are going to have holes in them. Um, instead, so if we think of like a, hard a hardware example, we think of these as kind of washers instead. So what I mean is something like the following situation. We have the disk that we had from before, but now there is this hole in it. And so a, a, this so-called washer is actually a, um, it's a disc with a concentric disc removed from it. Um, and this is actually a fairly simple problem to adapt to. I'm gonna draw my washer a little bit bigger here. So we're gonna have a really, again, draw really wide, just so we can see it a little bit. And the thickness of this washer or disc, you should think it was really small. I'm just uh, enlarging it for the sake of illustration right here. And so then we have this concentric disc that's been removed from the inside. And so this kind of continues down here. Something like this. So we have this washer. Again, just something like you would get from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, wherever you like to buy your, your tools and things like that, right? So we have this, uh, this washer, which is a disc with a disc removed from it. And so if we look at the common center of these two discs, there is going to be this outer radius, uh, this outer radius that we see right here. And then there's going to be this inner radius associated to the smaller one, the inner radius. And the volume of a washer is going to be fairly simple, right? You're going to take the big washer, uh, so the outer washer, you're gonna take its volume and you're gonna subtract from it the inner, not, I shouldn't say the inner, the outer washer should be the outer disc. Uh, and then we take the inner disc and remove it. And although removing your inner child from your life might be detrimental for your mental health, this is a perfectly good thing to do for washers and things like that. You take away the inner disc from the outer disc. Well, the outer disc has a volume of uh, pi, we're gonna take outer radius squared, uh, its thickness we'll call it delta x, uh, and then we subtract from that pi times the inner radius ir squared times the thickness, again we'll call it delta x. And so notice that this expression that both terms are divisible by pi, we can factor that out. Both of them have the exact same thickness, this delta x, uh, which we're seeing right here, delta x. And so if we factor this thing, we end up with the following. We get pi, well actually it's just written right here. We end up with pi times the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared times f of x. Now suppose that the outer radius is given by some function, some function value, uh, we'll call it f of x. And then the inner radius is given by some other function which we call g of x. Then what this translates to happening is that for a single washer, we're gonna have pi times f of xi star squared minus g of xi star squared times the thickness delta x. So this right here represents the volume of a single washer. Um, we add these together to give an approximation of the volume of the entire solid revolution and to improve the, to approve the, the, the approximation, we take more and more and more slices, more and more cross sections, taking the limit as n goes to infinity, this will give us the true volume of the solid revolution. And this gives us the following formula, the volume uh, would equal the integral from a to b, pi times f of x squared minus g of x squared dx. Notice this is a difference of squares. We're not taking f minus g quantity squared. We square the f, we square the g, and then we subtract it. The order of operations does matter there significantly. And so this is what's commonly referred to as the washer method. This is a generalization of the disk method we had seen before. It's just this now accommodates for the fact of what if our disk has a hole in it. Um, we can think of the disk method as a special specification, a specialization of this washer method where what if the inner radius is zero, you remove nothing from it. So the two are often going hand in hand. And so let's illustrate this with an example here. Uh, so let's find the volume of the solid 
of revolution obtained by rotating this region that you see in front of you. It's bounded by y squared equals x and x equals 2y about the y-axis. So let's spin this thing around the y-axis, as you can see right here. Um, and the region is given to you. Uh, and we can see this right here. And it's again, it's always to my recommendation that you draw these pictures out. Try to visualize the solid the best you can. So as we rotate this thing around the y-axis, we're going to get some type of conical shape as we rotate the x equals y, or the x equals 2y. But then there's going to be this curvature uh, that happens in the inside of it. Something like that. This is a, ho a horrible drawing here. Uh, let's try this one more time. We're going to get something like this. Again, it looks like an ice cream cone, but then there's this, it's got this curve going on in the middle. Again, hideous drawing. You can see why I borrow three-dimensional drawings from the textbook on these ones here. But that's the, that's the type of this, the, the solid we're trying to create right here. Now, look at this cross-sectional uh, rectangle right here. You'll notice that the, we're trying to go from our axis I'm going to switch my color here. Our axis is the y-axis, and so we're trying to measure the distance coming out from here. So this distance you see illustrated right here, this is what we mean by our outer radius. Um, the distance from the axis of revolution to the outermost point on our rotation. On the other hand, the inner radius is going to be a much smaller distance. It's the distance from the y-axis up to this point right here on the inside the inner radius, like so. And so this thing is going to have a hole. There's going to be a hole inside of this solid of revolution because as we rotate this one, if we rotate this one um, rectangle throughout, we're going to make this washer-like object that you see now illustrated here on the screen. So the washer method is going to be the appropriate technique to calculate the volume of this solid of revolution. So the volume is going to equal the integral uh, we'll come back to the boundary in just a second. If we apply the definition of the washer method, we're going to get pi times the difference of squares. We take the outer radius first. And so the one that's farther away from the x-axis is going to be uh, the line, x equals 2y. And so we're going to get 2y squared minus the inner radius, uh, which in this example would be the parabola, x equals y squared. So we're going to get y squared squared. And then we have the thickness. How thick are our rectangles? How thick are our cross sections going to be? As you see here in the illustration, the thickness of this rectangle, because it's actually set horizontally, the thickness of the rectangle is going to be the y coordinate. It's a, there's a small change of the y coordinate. There's a rise going on there. And so what that means for our integral is that our integral is going to have the differential dy. We're going to integrate this thing with respect to y. And because we're integrating with respect to y, we want these to be functions of y, not functions of x. So you'll notice that in this situation, how we have x equals 2y and x equals y squared, that is extremely preferable given that we want to integrate with respect to y. With the previous examples we've seen where our thickness was a dx, that tells us that we want to integrate with respect to x. And so we do have to pay attention to this differential because if we want to integrate with respect to x, Instead of with respect to y, this would have to become y equals the square root of x, and this one would have to become y equals one half x. So the approach you take depends on which variable you're going to integrate with respect to. So you're going to see in the future, we're going to pay attention to how thick are our cross sections. This emphasizes why it's so important to consider what does a typical cross section look like here. All right, this gets us back now to the bounds of the integral. These are going to be y coordinates, y equals whatever to y equals whatever. So for the y coordinate going up is the positive direction. So we need to figure out what is the y coordinate of this point right here. Uh, by illustration, this is clearly the origin, 0, 0. Notice if y equals 0, x, you know, 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 squared is both 0. So that's the point of intersection. Uh, this point right here might be a little less intuitive. Uh, so let's solve it just by intersecting. That is, set the two equal to each other. We solve the equation 2y equals y squared. Um, you can subtract 2y from both sides. y squared minus 2y equals 0. If you factor, you get y times y minus 2 equals 0. And so the two points of intersection is 0, which we already knew, and 2 is the other one. Um, so this point right here is 4, comma 2. Notice that 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 squared is likewise 4. 
So we're gonna integrate from y equals zero to y equals two. Notice that these are gonna be the y coordinates, not the x coordinates. We wanna see how the y changes because we have to determine where does the where do these rectangles live? They live between y equals zero and y equals two. So once you set up the integral, and for these type of story problems, that's always the hardest part, setting up the integral correctly. Once you set up the integral correctly, the calculation is going to be fairly routine compared to what we've seen before. Just apply the fundamental theorem of calculus at the right spot. So we have to algebraically prepare this thing. 2y squared will become a 4y squared. And then y squared squared gives us a y to the fourth. Uh, this thing is now perfect for the power rule uh, to go about. So we're going to get pi times 4 thirds y cubed minus y to the fifth over 5 as we go from 0 to 2. We love the fact that the bottom number is a 0 because when we plug in 0, everything will just vanish. Uh, when we plug in 2, we're going to get something non-trivial, so let's see what that is. Uh, we get pi times 4 thirds times 2 cubed, which is an 8, minus 2 to the 30... 2 to the 5th, which is 32, all over 5. Uh, 8 times 5, of course, that's likewise a 32. You can factor out the common numerator of 32. So we end up with 32 pi, and this sits above now a 1 3rd minus a 1 5th. Now, to find a common denominator, we're going to have to times the 1 3rd uh, by 5 over 5. 5 over 5. We'll do that for the 1 5th as well, 3 over 3 like so. So we're going to get 5 minus 3 for the numerator, which gives us another uh, 2 over 15. And so then the final result uh, should then be 64 pi over 15 as the, uh, the volume of this solid of revolution. And this gives us an illustration how one can use the washer method, uh, which is a very nice generalization of the disk method.